she wasn't behind the wheel. The investigator looks at me and he says, do you have any idea what happened here tonight? But she still let a drunk take the keys. He said, you, you've murdered these two people. Her story of recovery, plus the silent killer that's robbing you of your health. That is enough to cause high blood pressure. Find out why you may be waking up exhausted. It's a sign of brain dysfunction. And hear how you can protect your sleep. All on today's 700 Club Interactive. Hi, and welcome to the show. You know, as parents, we often pay for our children to attend soccer camp, maybe a gymnastics camp, band camp for some, or an educational camp. We may even schedule family vacations and other commitments around them because we recognize their benefits. But imagine what could happen if we put as much effort and financial investment into our children's spiritual development. Well, Bible camps are a great place for kids to connect with their peers, to be influenced by godly counselors, experience and conquer new adventures, and be transformed by the Word of God. During America's early days, frontier settlers were so spread out that preachers called circuit riders rode from home to home preaching the gospel. Paul Strand shows us how that led to the only Bible camp in America that's still meeting 200 years later. Those circuit riders lit a fire that became America's second great awakening. Christians camped out by the thousands to hear these traveling evangelists. In 1818, seekers and the saved began to meet in an Ohio valley by a creek known as Hollow Rock. So imagine, these summer camp meetings at Hollow Rock have been going on for 200 solid years without a break. And it was a lot harder to get here in the 1800s. Back then, the road ran right along the Hollow Rock Run, and you had to ford it seven times to get to the campground. Sharon Brooks Woodruff has been coming here 75 years, and her ancestors long before that. My grandmother actually came in a uh, horse and buggy. Same for Lynn Campbell's ancestors. My grandmother's grandparents came here and generation after generation. Traveling evangelist Lane Lohman's father preached here 15 different years, and Lane is drawn back over and over. And what the secret is, they hand it down to the next generation. Mel Truex has presided over the camp since 1977. This will be the eighth or ninth generation of families that have made this place what it is. is At Three Tabernacles, half a dozen services bring the faithful together to worship and hear the word each day. And at 1.15 p.m. without fail, the camp bell rings out and everyone stops what they're doing to pray for several minutes. Many have met Jesus Christ here. Many have let him heal their broken lives. Truex remembers the conversion of one man whose marriage had fallen apart. And he said, oh my. He said, there's my wife that I've separated from. And she found Jesus too. And they met together. And in a few months, they remarried. Prayer circles often break out to take needs to the Lord. You can share things and you know that when people say, I'm praying for you, they are praying for you. Kids and teens love coming even if they're cut off from their usual online life. We don't have a pool, we don't have internet, they can't play their games. We're so concentrated on seeking God's will and that His Holy Spirit will just permeate this place in such a way that we do feel like we're on holy ground. Campbell remembers as a kid, she could hardly wait to get back to Hollow Rock. I packed a week before camp, I was ready to come. One lifelong camp goer said he offered his kids Disney World or Hollow Rock one summer. They all shouted, Hollow Rock! I see a hunger, a new hunger, especially in young people, for something that's going to take them beyond just going to church, just being a nice person, but wanting to be holy and want to be right with God. All agree it's the camp's 200-year emphasis on holiness that is at the heart of Hollow Rock's success. God said, be you holy, for I am holy. So we receive freedom from the power of sin. That's what we get and that beautiful uh, relationship that's untainted by any essence of sin in our lives. It's just totally died out to itself and things that would, would distract from having that relationship with Him. We can actually live, choose to live above willful sin, and that's freedom. And when you find that, that relationship, you realize His ways are best. Why would I try to tell an awesome God how he ought to do it, even though sometimes we do? Develop a hunger for God, there is no end to what God can do. Those at Hollow Rock do seek to change the world for Christ. In the meantime, they're happy to bask in what's right here. There's just something about this place. When you walk onto the campus, I mean, you just have that 
that peace, that calming, you know, God's presence is here. Evangelist John Brasher so loved Hollow Rock, he preached here again and again across half a century. When he was near death and could no longer come here physically, he sent a letter to the Hollow Rock congregation, writing, tell the trees, the hills, the rambling little creek, the bubbling springs, that the old preacher loves them very much. They are like music in my memory. It's now an American memory that stretches a solid 200 years. Paul Strand, CBN News, reporting from the Hollow Rock Camp in Ohio. Our reporter, Paul, wow. may get into trouble for having his cell phone there on yeah. the Hollow Rock Campus. Technology on campus. How about yeah. that one uh, yeah. woman has been going for 75 years? I thought I had a good run of two summers in a row with my boys at our church yeah. campus. <laughs> but you know, there's years. something very winsome about that, about coming away from all of the distractions, yes, about wonderful. stepping into a legacy and a history like that. I, don't, I think it sounds pretty wonderful. Yeah, and getting away from the stress of our normal environment is a, is a great thing. Have you, did you do that as a kid or as a parent? Do the well, you know, camps? we didn't as a family. Um, my parents had a mixed marriage. My dad was Catholic. My mother was Lutheran. So my sister and I went to Catholic girls camp. But, you know, it was more summer camp. And this is very focused on yeah. the Lord. And so some of my best days with my boys has been camps, That's awesome. uh, church camps during the summer. Great, Great memory, Yeah, absolutely. And investing in. <laughs> absolutely. Well, coming up, it's called a silent killer. When we're not breathing, a constriction of blood vessels makes the heart work harder, uh, may cause heart enlargement, and may contribute to heart attacks and death. And 80 percent of the people suffering from it don't even know they have it. We'll tell you the warning signs of sleep apnea and how you can protect yourself from its effects. That's when we come back. Well, if you're getting to sleep on time and you're still waking up groggy, the problem may be sleep apnea. In part three of our series, Protect Your Sleep, Gordon Robertson shares more about this disorder and how you can ward off its effects. When was the last time you held your breath? It probably wasn't long before you needed some air. Well, millions of Americans stop breathing every night, and they don't even know it's happening. They stop breathing over and over, and they wake up the next morning feeling tired. And they're more prone to heart attacks and stroke. This pattern of not breathing is called sleep apnea, and it's a real threat to your health and life. The word apnea means without breathing. A means without, B N E A refers to breathing. And so there's actually a collapse, closing off of the upper airway. So what happens when we're not breathing, a constriction of blood vessels makes the heart work harder, uh, may cause heart enlargement, and may contribute to heart attacks and death. Dr. J. Catesby Ware is a sleep specialist and professor at Eastern Virginia Medical School. He has been studying sleep for over 45 years. He knows that our bodies give us clues that we might have a sleep disorder. See if these clues could be pointing to you. Well, I tell people who are sleepy for any reason that it's a sign of brain dysfunction. If somebody stops breathing five times per hour, so that's 30 or 40 times during the night. That is enough to cause high blood pressure. And that's probably the most dramatic and uh, earliest thing that, that has been shown with sleep apnea. High blood pressure sets the stage for heart disease and stroke. According to the CDC, seven out of 10 Americans who have their first heart attack also have high blood pressure. Here are a few warning signs that you might have high blood pressure severe headaches, fatigue and confusion, vision problems, and chest pain. If you are experiencing any of these signs, you need to get them checked out by your doctor. It could be that sleep apnea is the cause of the problem. You may sleep very poorly and not be aware of it. And you may think you sleep poorly when actually your sleep was okay. So that's what makes it such a challenging problem for physicians to deal with most sleep apnea events, their average duration is 20 seconds long. Then you wake up, you breathe six times, and fall back to sleep because you're very sleepy. The 
it's not enough to register in your memory. And so what you realize is, well, I didn't have very restful sleep. I didn't have very deep sleep. Here's another sign that you might have sleep apnea, and it's one that you probably aren't even aware of, snoring. We have a big army of helpers to identify sleep apnea patients, and they're usually the bed partner. The bed partner notes snoring, maybe some pauses in the breathing. So those are the typical things we look for. The sad reality is that 80% of sleep apnea sufferers go undiagnosed. What's usually seen as a condition that affects only overweight, middle-aged men is now becoming a growing problem for women too. Well, early on, we thought the typical sleep apnea patient was an overweight male, middle-aged, who snored. And uh, women were, were ignored. But now we realize that an awful lot of women have sleep apnea. Women look more like men after menopause. So not only do they have a hormone change that uh, relaxes the muscles in the upper airway, uh, but they usually gain weight. If you have any of these symptoms, now is the time to talk to your doctor about getting a sleep study. The sooner you discover what's happening while you sleep, the sooner you can get the help you need. What a sleep study entails is actually measuring many of the same things uh, that are measured during a physical exam during the day. You measure heartbeat, you measure breathing, you measure oxygen, you measure muscle tone. And so when somebody gets a sleep study, they, uh, we put sensors on their body to measure those things. And then uh, we look at the sleep the next, uh, next day by looking at what happened to all those measures. And it's really remarkable that some people can have enormous heartbeat irregularities during sleep. And during the 30 seconds when you listen to it or less during the day, it sounds completely normal. If you are diagnosed with obstructive sleep apnea, then one of the treatment options is a CPAP machine. CPAP stands for Continuous Positive Airway Pressure. During the night, pressurized air is used to make sure that the airway is kept open to prevent apnea events. When used properly, the benefits can be seen almost immediately. You'll have lower blood pressure and won't feel sleepy during the day. In addition to CPAP, other new treatments are being developed and used. Uh, there are other treatments. For example, uh, we can use uh, an oral appliance, which changes the position of the jaw and opens up the airway. Uh, there are actually some medications that seem to increase the tone. And so if we understand the specific things that contribute, uh, then we can help far more than help the patients. One of the best ways to reduce the impact of sleep apnea is by making the commitment to live a healthier lifestyle. Well, weight loss, number one. So. If you can change your lifestyle to eat less, uh, maybe exercise more, eat better diets, uh, hang out with people who don't have a, a, a weight problem. And it's really interesting that obesity is contagious in the sense that if you hang out with obese people, you're more likely to be obese. And again, that's not, none of these things are easy, but uh, it's a choice people have to make you know, what am I going to do to get rid of this? Don't let sleep apnea rob you of a healthy life. If you are experiencing poor sleep, have high blood pressure, and are overweight, don't ignore the problem. Partner with your doctor and see if you need to get a sleep study. Take charge of your health today and enjoy the gift of life that God has given you. Oh, it's so important. A good night's sleep is vital for our health. And we have a free Protect Your Sleep DVD and booklet with all the life-changing information from the entire five-part series. And in it, you'll learn how to get a perfect night's sleep, or at least close to it, stop insomnia, relieve pain, and protect against sleep apnea, as we just saw, and lots more. All you have to do is call us at 800-700-7000 or visit CBN.com to request your free Protect Your Sleep DVD or booklet. 
and start having the kind of sleep that you've been dreaming of. Terry, so many of us are not getting enough sleep. It's so crucial to our health. Yeah, you know, when you look at, for we were specifically looking at sleep apnea at the end of that, when you look at, go online and check it out, some of the things that happen when your brain is deprived of oxygen after a while, if you have sleep apnea, you'll be getting that mask. I'll tell you, it's serious. It really is. Well, still to come, after a night of drinking, a young woman wakes up with blood on her hands in more ways than one. He took their driver's license and he threw them at me across the table. And he said, you, you've murdered these two people. Find out what happened next right after this. There is a law on the books in the state of Tennessee. It's called DUI by allowance. A passenger can be charged for a crime if they knowingly let their friend drive drunk. It's a crime Heather Heck was guilty of after she was in a car involved in a fatal accident. Heather Heck was raised by a single mother. When she was 12 years old, Heather found out who her father was. Even though he was never around, Heather longed to know him. Although I had a, a really loving family, there was a piece of me that was missing. You know, I, I wanted to know who my dad was. I wanted to have a relationship with him. I remember being a kid and watching other fathers interact with their daughters, and, and it was something that I always wanted for myself. Several years later, Heather finally got a chance to meet her father. I was 18 years old, very excited that, that this man wanted to attempt to have a relationship with me. And so when I knocked on the door, a, an aunt answered the door and looked at me and said, this isn't a good time. And about that time, I saw my father walk behind her through the hall, look at me and continue to, to walk by. And for whatever reason, um, he didn't want to see me. And after that night, I stopped trying. And it began to spiral. All of these feelings that I had bottled up for years, um, just feeling like I wasn't good enough, that I wasn't worthy to be loved, this, the feeling of being rejected. Um, and for me, it was really the turning point in my own lifestyle. From that point, I didn't want to feel anything. And I really turned to, to drugs and alcohol after that point just to be numb. Heather had grown up in the church and learned about God's love for her. But her drug and alcohol abuse had blinded her to what she knew to be true. So I didn't have to deal with the hurt or the brokenness or even deal with all of these emotions of, about my father or just feeling inadequate. Um, I liked the way that drugs and alcohol made me feel because I didn't have to feel anything. Heather got pregnant and had a son, Jonah. Even though she was a single mom, her lifestyle still revolved around drugs and alcohol. One night after smoking pot and excessive drinking, Heather was riding in a car with her friend. The driver, also drinking, crashed into another car, killing those two people instantly. Heather was charged with DUI by allowance. And I remember the investigator looks at me and he says, do you have any idea what happened here tonight? And I, I said, no. And he took the couple that passed away, he took their driver's license and he threw them at me across the table. And he said, you, You've murdered these two people. And that's really when the weight of um, the full weight of what the reality of what had happened, that's when it hit me. And I remember looking down at this couple's face that I'll never know and knowing that because of me and my actions, they weren't going home to see their family. The accident threw Heather into a deep depression. I had the audacity to be angry at God throughout all of it because I was angry at him because he took them and he left me. And I knew I didn't deserve to live. A week later, Heather's mom asked her to go to church with her. Heather agreed to go. I think that in that moment, I finally heard the gospel with my heart and not my head. And I realized that the weight that I was carrying was this weight of sin. But you see, Jesus had come to take that weight so I could be free. I walked down to the altar, and it was a, I was a mess. And a woman at the front, she stepped out and met me and brought me back with her and helped me walk the rest of the way. That day, for the first time in my life, it, it was as if I finally got it. 
that God loved me with this unending, never failing, all consuming love. No matter how hard I tried to run from him, he pursued me. He never gave up and really started thinking about what kind of love would go to those kind of links. And then it dawned on me the kind of love that would die on a cross. Heather asked Jesus into her heart that day. Women from the church loved her and taught her what it meant to be a Christian. I had a woman who was patient with me and she just began to walk with me and break things down like repentance and baptism. And, and little by little, God was shifting things and I was changing. And I didn't even realize that he was doing it because it wasn't that I had to try or strive. Just the more that we got in the Word, the more He just began to renew me. A year after the deadly DUI, the case finally went to trial. Heather pled guilty to felony charges and had to serve one year in prison. We began a Bible study there in this maximum security facility every day, and we grew to almost 30 women. And the entire atmosphere in that place began to shift. We saw signs and wonders and miracles, and I saw as one by one these women begin to give their lives to Jesus. Heather also learned to forgive her father, who had passed away years before. Forgiveness is a hard thing because it wasn't letting him off the hook, but it was just really kind of taking back the power. It was a really healing moment, and, and the truth is, Unless we forgive them, how can God forgive us? And who are we you know, to hold anything against anyone? Heather never knew her earthly father, but her heavenly father was there all along. Every little girl wants a hero, a knight in shining armor that will rescue her. And um, it's the beauty of God, you know, when you begin to understand the father heart of God. And really, you know, he is the father to the fatherless. And He heals all things, all wounds, and He fills every, every bit of emptiness with His love. Today, Heather works for a campus ministry called Every Nation. She says the leaders of tomorrow are on the college campuses of today. Heather loves to share the gospel of Christ with students whenever and wherever she can. My spiritual journey has been more of just really the story of restoration. You know, I know that many times we think about the cross, we just think about salvation, but to see the thing is the cross doesn't just bring salvation, it brings restoration. And looking back at my life and the mess that was there, you know, the one thing that sums up what Jesus has done is He has restored everything that was broken. He can do that for you too. He is our good, good Father. He knows you inside and out. One of the things I love about Heather's story is when she talks about the fact that God pursued her. You know, God's pursuing you too. He pursues all of us as we, He refines and hones and chisels off the rough edges and, and prepares us for eternity with Him. If you're feeling like something's missing from your life, or if you know that you're hanging on to something you shouldn't hang on to, go to the heart of your Father. He's so able, so able to remove what needs to be removed, to restore what needs to be restored, to love you to wholeness. Jesus said, I came that you might have life, not just life, He said, and have it abundantly. If you're not living life abundantly right now, you're missing out on the whole reason that Jesus came, and that's a part of your inheritance as His child. If you have a need in your life today and you need to pray with someone, our prayer lines are always open. You know who's going to answer your phone call? It's somebody who's prayed the prayer we're talking about, who's come to a place of surrender, of saying, God, I want everything you've got to give me and I'm giving you all that I am and all that I have. Call now. Our lines are toll free. It's 1-800-700-7000. And there's someone waiting to talk to you who, as I said, has prayed that prayer and found that abundant life and that forgiveness. You find it too today. It's not chance that you're watching this program. God wants to make himself real and known to you. Andrew? Such a powerful story. And I think one of the elements of that story that, that speaks volumes is when 
she said I was a mess, but I yeah. wanted to go forward and see Christ. And she said, someone came out and met me yeah. and someone went with me. And, you know, we need to look for that one we can bless. And yes. as we all pursue the rescuing love of God, who out there can we walk with exactly. along the journey? We want to leave you today with 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. As Terry said, you can always give us a call. There is someone to pray with you about whatever is on your heart, whatever concerns or burdens you have. 800-700-7000. We'd love to pray with you. Until next time, I'm Andrew Knox for Terry Mewson. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.